What's up, guys? I am just entering a trade. A couple hours before London Open. What? Yeah. Not something I normally do, but <laughs> I opened the charts, and uh, we had a good situation here. So it really stood out as being very clean and high probability. It may not move until things pick up, but uh, I did want to put something on this trade. If we look at the Australian versus U.S. dollar here, uh, looking at our background, we are bullish. That is the first thing. Let's go through the, the proper analysis. Uh, here we're seeing new high ground. And if we go to the one hour chart and look at that new high ground, we don't have weakness. We have a nice trend, which this is the highest prices, which tell you about the most recent weakness coming in. And if we look at the amount, right now, look at your left and the, the high volume points, right? We don't have high volume weakness. Um, we have a moderate amount, which tends to in a trend, right? And we're looking at the amount of volume. So the activity up here really tells us about sellers and weakness. And a moderate amount tends to give you a retracement so you can look to get back in the trend, right? Now, we're at the 50 EMA, which is a nice uh, support in a trend. But not just that, of course. My FIB zone, 50 to 618, as usual. And you start to recognize... If you know my material, that this is really a textbook, as we call it, situation to look for the entry. Now, Australia is open at this time. The market is open in Australia. So, um, and generally, it's it's nice and bullish in the background. Uh, now, let's go to the five minute in here, because, of course, that has to confirm to get into the trade. And let's see how it reacted. Now, when we reached the FIB area, Right, that's when it starts to tell us about buyers. Uh, basically, we hit it here. We had some volume. Some as long as we're getting some increase in volume into this area, it does tell us that buy activity is increasing. Here's our six one eight overshoot pattern, which I talk about a lot, and it's really, really a strong point to tell you what's going on with buyers. And you see that activity there, right? Six one eight overshoot. A lot of you know this. And if it wants to go lower, we just need to see that the buyers are really. And I I like to see multiple. Areas that show buying into lower prices, buying into lower prices. So it's not just once. Um, it's showing that there's accumulation, right? There's a building up of long positions in this area. So if it was just, you know, kind of one thing, you know, maybe I wouldn't have taken it. But this, these three high volume points are all every time price goes into new low ground, new low ground. And that's what's attracting the demand and, and revealing the you know, the buyer's looking for good low prices, and they got them. Generally, in this area, they're happy with this. And that's a good amount of volume for this time of day and very clear accumulation off of this price area, right? Okay, now going forward. So we have the five minute in the background uh, uh, working together, both pointing bullish. Now, if we look at going forward and the entry, now we use uh, basically uh, the automatic rally and the testing at the 14 EMA to, to simplify areas that are going to tell us about sellers. We know that buyers are active, but we need the imbalance, right? We want to see selling inactive. And that's going to show up at a 14 EMA test, which in this case, it just kind of blew through it. But automatic rally, which we define as the first level of resistance. Going off of that, if you could see it, my dojis are green. Uh, First level of resistance after strength, right, is here. We come and test that again here, right? And the automatic rally is telling you about sellers. And if it retests it, it's telling you about sellers in this area, right? Now you see the volume drop off. So you see the imbalance, right? The high volume points showing buying in this price area and the automatic rally and a retest of that area showing decreased volume, lower volume, revealing the imbalance. Uh, the lack of selling with the stronger buying. Now, going forward, this is about when I opened the chart. So I'm seeing this and going, okay, I do want to put something on this. Australian session is open. Um, so if there's any setups that do occur pre-London that I would ever take, even though it's rare, 
you know, I tend to go with AU or even AJ because both markets are open on that. And you can get those moves, you know, you open up your chart for London and you see that earlier in the day, the Australian dollar made its move, right? And, um, and that's because they are open at that time. So <clears throat> moving up through the automatic rally, I'll just make it easier to see, which is here is what triggered the entry. So if you look at the getting into new high ground, this is the highest prices we've seen since this accumulation started right through here. This is just slightly above it, the highest prices we've seen so far. Um, so looking at that, again, higher prices tell you about sellers. And someone asked me the other day, what's with these new high ground, new low ground? How, why is it so important? Well, if you're looking to, uh, you know, go back to regular markets, if you don't know the answer, go to any sort of market, go to the housing market. And if uh, the sale price of houses has increased to a level that has not recently been seen, right, and the market is going up, it's going to reveal how many people are willing to sell at that price, right? So higher prices in any market are attractive to sellers, right? So applying that very basic principle. So the slightly higher price and again, lower prices are, are, are may be attractive to buyers. And in this case, we do see that if something goes on sale, right? If you're looking to buy a house and there's lower prices, it's going to attract buyers, right? So just think of supply and demand in any market. And, uh, it, it, you know, that's what, that's why price moves, right? So if we move up through here and we're seeing low volume, which we are, this is saying the selling is the sellers are not very interested here. They're going to be higher up, right? So if we have buyers very, very interested and active and selling inactive, we have an imbalance. We're going to move up very, very high probability. And that's what's built into these setups to see that uh, just as the um, imbalance is really getting extreme. And that's the idea of, of getting into that at that point. Um, so I entered just as it was going through here, just slightly above it. The thing was on this candle right here. After it cleared this and was showing a low volume and no no issue with weakness coming in. Now, if it's coming down right now, that's not an issue because you know it doesn't have to play out right away for it to be a good trade. It just has to get to the target before the stop loss, right? And looking to our left, we have so much buying supporting this situation that, you know, just probability wise we'll say the 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 probability of this breaking out and doing a leg down is very very low right this is likely to attract buyers and where's the selling that's going to even do all that right if it's not here it's not likely to be here either this is only very likely to bring more demand so and as many as you, of you know as on the stop loss we do want to stay out of this area and allow for these fake break situations. So if it pops down again and goes slightly below, because again, we talk about lower prices, there's our low, slightly below, we see buyers. Slightly below, we see buyers. Now, I'm gonna give myself one more chance on that if it wants to go lower and do a fake breakout. You know, a lot of people will get their stop loss hit on that. So typically five to 10 pips below is a good place to get your stop. Now, if it breaks out through that, right, then it's really saying that, okay, there was buying here, but the selling picked up and it might go another leg down. Right. And you might not see the demand show up. Right. But that would be a little inconsistent. That would be a change. Um, we should be able to understand the situation. Why? You know, we expect if we do come down to kind of be protected by these buyers coming in again. And, you know. More than likely, we're not we're not going to be able to come down there because we just don't see enough selling in this area. So from there, obviously, the projection is to move up. but still leaving the stop loss out of the way of this in case it wants to continue to accumulate in here, we wouldn't want to take a loss while that's still kind of setting up. Right. So our stop loss is out of the way below here. Um, as far as where, where it may go, I haven't really mapped it out. Um, but you know, talking about generally what we do with targets is we just want to be aware of on the way up where we might run into some selling. And these are two areas. So I'll look for it. If we can move up, I'm going to see how much weakness shows up or not into these areas now, right? Uh, let's see. How many pips is that? 65. 
Okay, so uh, this is a 20 pip move to here, right? Now, if we get here, I'll see what it looks like. If there's a ton of selling, I can move my stop up. I can close half. If it's just kind of moving through, I can look for higher prices, right? Um, and the projection, normally when I take a, a trade, this is a very you know common situation to be getting into a trade, right? So we have an uptrend and a retracement area. Uh, the main target on these is going back to basically the high. You know, it, it typically will maybe double top or do a fake break. But by the end of the day, if we get to the high, back to the high of the trend that we're, we're buying the retracement on, that's my typical target. These areas we have to watch for sellers, and we can manage the trade based on what we're seeing, how much weakness may or may not show up. So that's a good checkpoint. Nothing wrong with taking some profit or, or managing the trade based on what the chart is telling you is, is going to happen from there. You could have a 618 overshoot here with a lot of weakness and bring it back down, and maybe we buy later here, right? So uh, as long as the one hour is not showing a, a reversal situation. But um, so we have our area sort of mapped out. This I'll watch, see what happens, manage the trade potentially. Uh, but again, typically on these retracement trades, you know, by the end of the day, if we're back to the high, that's the good, that's the trade. If we go into new high ground, do another leg up, that's great too. But I'd still like to take some profit here, no matter what, just because if sellers are active, if you know, remember here's the amount of selling we saw up here, not a lot, but as we tend to get into new high ground, if there's going to be a lot of supply, if there's going to be a lot of selling. This is a spot where they tend to show up, right? Um, it's also a spot where the markup activity, right, pushing price up after pre-positioning here, um, tends to stop and test for sellers, right? And that's why, you know, chasing breakouts is just a terrible way to trade. And again, if sellers are going to be active, this is a place. So there could even be just sort of lack of activity, sort of a non-event and come down off of that. You know, just that's how important that is. Um but again, if possible, whenever possible, I like to uh, keep an eye on these levels as they're coming in and see how I might want to manage the trade. If it breaks out, I can trail it, you know. So this should seem familiar to anyone trading my method. If you have the course, this is like bread and butter stuff, right? And again, that's the only reason I would be taking a trade at this time of day. Um, I went about 50% of my max risk. I didn't go crazy on it. But... As I say, in these situations, they may not be perfect. Uh, the, the, the chart is very nice, but the time of day, we may not move for a few hours, you know. Uh, but I want to be in it if it's this good, if it's this clean. But, you know, going lower risk because of the time of day basically is what I did. So right now, and as I say, the trade doesn't have to move quickly. I just want to see information that's good uh, as we're waiting. And again, here, this lowering, lowering, lowering of volume in this high price area is really revealing the lack of selling coming off of here, right? It's it's basically a big old no supply situation, lack of supply. And again, the demand to the left is so strong, that's that's the imbalance, right? And what happens in any market when you have more buyers than sellers, right? More demand than supply, price goes up. All right, guys, hopefully that's helpful. Um, you could always email me, uh, I'll put a link in the description. If you're learning my method, if you have any questions, we have the Forex course, crypto course. We do the live sessions Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We have the crypto class Sunday. Everybody's making the money on the cryptos. That's been great. Um, and that's it. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on this trade and uh, see how it plays out and, and how I manage it and stuff. All right, guys. Have a good one.